That was squeeze me, please. That was slave. squeeze me, please. Sort of, anyway. That was a follow with that shit. Says goodbye to Jane. Mum, we're all crazy now because I love you. Come on, feel the noise. So happy. Here in London's Marquee Club throughout the years 1970 to 1973. The glam year. The letter J keeps cropping crop up. It was Mark Bowl in Hot Love for years 1970. The Beatles decide to split, and in the long hot summer, George Harrison has his first major hit with My Sweet Lord. The lock rock and roll look in those days meant cheesecloth beards and long hair. And into the, the drab came a young man who was going to change the rock and roll look forever. That was Mark Bowen. And in 1970, he released a single called Ride a White Swan, which got to number two. Which, was, which were both massive hits. And after that, uh, just a long succession of hits. Until unfortunately he died in... Hits, hits, hits. Uh, 1977, September, which is a real shame. He died in a car accident. There were other bands around the same period who also evolved, inspired by Bowen, and one of them being a band called Ambrose Slade, who hailed from Wolverhampton. Reformed skinheads, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they come from Wolverhampton. It was in 1970 they released a record called Play It Loud. And there they were on the cover with their skinheads and standing by a barrel. But it wasn't until 71 they released a single called Get Down, Get With It. And that got to number 16 in the UK charts. Well, by a string of hits such as the name of Paul Gadd had minor success in the 1960s under the name Paul Raven. However, it wasn't until 1970 that he evolved into... Our Gary. That was Gary Glitter. Gary and his Glitter. first hit was in 1972. That was Rock and Roll Parts 1 and 2. Those suits. Those boots. A chopper. And haircut. Those lyrics. And those drummers. Yeah, yeah, two drummers. Two drummers, yeah. And that was great because like we used to watch Top of the Pops. There'd be two drummers there, not just one. And that's the horn section. And Gary yeah. took rock and roll and threw it right back at you, regurgitated it, and came on as probably the most outrageous of the glam rockers and certainly the one with the biggest pop profile. He was the hairiest taking, chest. The hairiest chest was going on. There was a man who was standing behind it, a man who was the high priest of glam whose influence has been felt for years and, in fact, doesn't seem to want to go away. That man was called David Bowie. David Bowie. David Bowie's first hit in this country was 1969, after he'd been making records since 64, so it took him a long time. That was Space Oddity. After that, in 1972, he had a hit with... Space Oddity? Starman. Oh, Starman, there you go. Starman, that was in 72. That got to number 10, and that was lifted from his album, Ziggy Stardust, which was recorded just around the corner from this Probably place. Probably the seminal 
the seminal album of uh, the glam period, I think. Massive influence on what's going on today, even, you know, 1972, that's 15 years ago. And Bo went on to write a string of hits, Jean Genie, which was said to be about Iggy Pop, although others claim it's about Jean Genet, the, the French writer. Um, he brought bisexuality into rock and roll, which is something that had never been done before, certainly been taboo until then, and also put theatre into the whole concept of what rock music could be as a live show. Ground control to make the top. <laughs> MC countdown engines on. Track ignition and may God's love be with you. But at the end of 73, after a massively successful world tour at the House of Odeon... David announced that he would not be playing live ever again, nor despite us. But about six months later, on that very stage there, behind those, David performed a 1980 floor show, which was for American TV via satellite. Never shown in this country. Never shown in this country. He didn't have the spiders with him either. He had Mick Ronson but the drummer was replaced and so was Trevor Boulder, the bass player. And he went on from then to become probably the high priest of glam as we know it, the, the greatest influence on rock and roll in the last 20 years and Definitely. certainly my favourite performer. Yeah, the most successful performer songwriter that's come out of England ever, What I think. was that song he wrote? Hang on to yourself. Hang on to yourself.